Welcome Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. Here we are, Friday 5th of June 2015, and after yesterday's complete nightmare, it's done. <laughs> as simple as that. Uh, to be honest, it was a lot of work, uh, putting it all back together, roughly doing it. There's a couple of bits I couldn't get right, to be honest. Down here at the rear, we've got a chip. I'm gonna call it battle damage now, because I think it would have caused more trouble to try and fix it, and it looks quite good with the odd little nick out of it and everything else like that. But as you can see, we've got Chewy, uh, on the top there, in the turret and everything else. And okay, the weathering isn't exactly what I was after, um, but it looks right to me. We've got a nice bit of streaking going on there. It's got that heavy metal look. We've given it a light rub over as well with some metalizers left over, just to give it that sort of heavy metal sheen as to go along with the weathering and everything else like that. Um, and what can you say? The plastic's crap, it's awful, I don't know. It, it does tend to be talking to you guys now, especially after yesterday's show, loads of emails from you. And a lot of you are pointing out that it's happened to you on other projects as well. So little things like on the X-Wing apparently it's done it, on a lot of the other kits it's done it, and a lot of the Bandai kits full stop. They don't like that type of um, enamel paints, uh, lacquer paints, or certainly enamel thinners. It, it does seem to attack the plastic. The plastic they use for these kits tends to be a tougher, obviously a, a hybrid ABS styrene type plastic. Um, and then obviously somewhere along the line it just has a reaction with this particular um, um, you know, the enamel uh, and crumbles. It's not even melting. A lot of people said it was melting. It's not melting, it physically just shatters. It just crumbles. It can't support its own weight. But anyway, we've done that one. Um, as I said, went along, gave it a little bit of dry brushing all over. Went over it with some more oils to try and tone down the black look because obviously I couldn't get it off because it had already dried on there and I didn't want to put any more enamel thinners on it to start you know, buffing it back. So what I did do was go over it with some oil paints, um, neat, just the gray, buffed it around everywhere, did some chipping work and that, a little bit of scuffing work using say a metalizer old brush. And then down here on the base, we did exactly the same as we did with the Sherman. So it's just PVA glue absolutely everywhere. And then we've gone round and then literally just, you know, sprinkled that on the top blow it off and get it out. Unfortunately, the static with this stuff is a bit of a nightmare, so trying to get it off the model uh, is a little bit of a pain, but it is there. It's still a nice kit and a good save, and in some ways it's that thing, you know, I know a lot of you will just get to a kit, get to a point, and you just bin it. I would say push through. You know, you can learn from it. Take that um, as a learning curve. If you get a kit that goes wrong, unless you're in a situation where, you know, I don't know, it's completely had it, and there's no way you can come back from it. But if there's a thing of like just binning it, use it to your advantage to think, right, okay, that's fix it. A lot of this I was thinking, right, we're gonna have to scratch build a lot of the parts. Took my time, get the tweezers out, put all the plastic bits together, coated it in extra thin glue. It's definitely your friend in this one got it all go back together and then we managed to put it in press fit get it all in there tight and then glue everywhere that's basically a moving part on this to lock it solid uh, and then we've done the trick on it so in some ways it's just that nice thing you've come back from it you go come back from the edge it was going to be a pain and now actually we've managed to fix it and it's all okay thoroughly enjoyed the build apart from up to that point and it went completely wrong now because of this and it was spoken about beforehand. I do have to say, a couple of the guys on the forum and that, uh, and Ian I speak to on Facebook, were talking to me about this particular thing before this happened, okay? So in some ways, perhaps I should have listened a little bit better to you guys, so sorry about that. But I've got some of these. Now these here are these new breed of water mixable oil paints. Now, as we all know, oil and water just don't mix, okay? So this is the way the clever bit is. They've taken one of the, the molecules off of this and replaced it with a, a synthetic type of uh, water of H2O uh, and then bolted it back to that molecule. So now it accepts water. Now this is a live on test because I've never done this before. These only literally turned up about an hour and a half, two hours ago. All right, so I ordered them up. They've come in today. So I thought, have a look. Now these are made by Lucas. It's the Berlin range, as you can see here, and these water mixable oil colors. There is other manufacturers out there who make them. All right, there's lots of them around. Um, and then obviously just have a look at see there is. there is cheaper options than this but this has got the white uh, this has got the white uh, what is this should be burnt umber oh it's just umber okay so you've got the, the black burnt umber the yellow and the white they're the ones I'd use the blues and that I don't do all that streaky rubbish as you know but certainly this stuff is gonna be the one to do now as I said the big thing is and it's true there is no odor to this whatsoever I just stuck my nose on that no I think we're okay so that's one good thing going for it. 
Now, I've got Buster out retirement because obviously this is just a quickie test to show you guys today. Obviously, I'm going to do a full thing on this and it'll be up Monday or Tuesday next week where I'm going to go right the way through the ins and outs and everything. So this is just a little quickie here live for the vlog, okay? So what we're going to do is we've got normal water here, okay? And just to prove it, it is normal water, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to put a little bit in a cup, okay? And the first test is, is just to make a simple wash just to see exactly what happens. So we're gonna come in here and it looks just like oils. I have to say this, it, you know, nothing fancy. And then we're gonna put it in here and then we're gonna give it a good old mix up. Now, immediately it seems to go a little bit gritty. Okay, but we're just gonna run with this and give it a good old mix and just to see what happens. Because bearing in mind, the thing is, you notice it's sort of sticking to the side of the cup and how well you guys can see that. Okay, but it, it's look no different to oils, apart from, as I say, it is gripping the side of this cup. So the idea is just to see how this actually reacts. As I say, I don't know, it's, it's a little bit funny because it's sticking and how well you can see this on the side of the cup here it's sticking to the side of the cup it looks like oil in water as in it's not exactly smooth but saying that the actual stuff itself looks okay so just going to bear with it we're just going to give this a bit of a mix up okay get all over now this is going to be a little bit weak i think but there is method to the madness. Now, Buster, who's come out of retirement for this, I'm just gonna have a go with it down here. Okay, so we're just gonna take some out and I want to see what happens. I want to see how well it flows and if it's actually gonna go around as everything says it will. Okay. Now, as I said, I am gonna do a full on test. This is literally just a, a quick one just to see. Now, the first thing I notice is you get brush marks off of this of where it is, okay? It's a little bit gritty as it's making its way round. There is no smell to it whatsoever, which is obviously a bonus, okay? And you might see it's it's pooling up in a few areas. I'm just gonna go down. Okay, it's not doing an, as good a job, shall we say, as a traditional oil wash it's got a slight texture to it okay now what i want to do is let's just test one test two i want to use it neat on the body so that's the rough side really rough side okay i just want to put it in here okay so this is going on someone like you'd think your traditional oils okay so we're just going to put it in here I'm just going to take some of this water and we're going to go over the top with it. Okay, we're just going to go around. Now, the big thing is, it doesn't seem to want to flow into recesses and stuff like that, okay, which is the only drawback to it. So, what I'm going to try is, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of dishwater soap to it, okay? So, just one second. Right, okay, so this is just because I'm thinking the way that this is, I reckon a drop of this, a tiny little drop, should make a massive difference. I'm just thinking it may improve the flow. Aha, now we're in business. A drop of washing up liquid, what that's done, if you can see it, it's completely changed it. It's turned it from being, quite frankly, gritty, horrible, oily if I'm honest into a very nice paste now the thing is as well because it's now got a bit of uh, washing up liquid in there what that should enable this to do is break the capillary action so you might notice down there now it's drying back but it looks probably quite nasty so what we're going to do is just going to try and repeat that now on here now I know this isn't the best one because poor old Buster's had about eight million coats of everything uh, metalizer sprays and and everything else like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna flow a little bit of this around just to see what happens. Okay, and that's gone on a lot nicer. 
Okay, so down here we're going to take this. I'm going to put some of this on top. This is the the other one now. I'm going to try and flow this around. And again, it's a lot smoother. All right. So what we're saying with this is it um, definitely needs uh, a little bit of washing up liquid or your dishwater soap, depending where you are in the world, just to get this to work. Okay. And now it's going on nice and smooth, absolutely everywhere. So. I'll just give this a, a general rub over. Now I know this isn't the best test in the world for it purely because of uh, what this is going over, but it's the only thing I've got at the moment, okay? But it's going on pretty good, just all over like you'd expect a normal wash to do now, all right? So we're gonna hold off of that there, okay? And then just have another look, see what's happening, see if it's separating, see at the bottom of the cup, no problem with that at all it's all looking pretty good so there we go so conclusions i can't really give any if i'm honest okay it's far too soon i'd like to have another play with this stuff i'd like to see how it reacts on different types of material different textures of material as well you know the nice thing is with this though allegedly it is purely water cleanup so and as you can see it's coming out down here so we've got no nasties, no smellies, uh, and all the rest of it. Okay, but generally, if I just tip it out, you can see on the water here, the way it holds. Okay, and then mixing in, it's not too bad at all. Okay, you can see it flows quite nicely. Not too bad. So, first impressions. First impressions, okay. Um, I'd like to spend a couple of hours playing with it, as I will do when we do our full on test to see exactly how this works. Would this have stopped the problem on our Bandai kits? Absolutely, no problem with that at all. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna have a play with this literally over the weekend. I'm gonna record a sort of an on test, which obviously you'll get on Monday, uh, where I'm gonna play with this stuff and see exactly what it can, can't do, mixing of colors, over layering as well, because obviously you know what it's like when you get oils over the top of each other, the various things that can happen and things like that. We want to know how well it cleans up. Now this isn't a fair test at all, because obviously it's uh, on a metalizer, unprotected finish, but generally, As you can see, comes up okay. No problem with that at all. So that should be quite interesting to see what happens. Obviously when it's dry, you would hope it would then stay into the recesses uh, and things like that and you can do it. That's not part's dry yet, it's drying. Okay, we we'll just try it in here with a damp cloth. Yeah, it's not too bad. As I say, not a fair test on Buster because he's just nasty these days. It's certainly everything else but there we go that ends our week nice week <laughs> nice to be back to work nice to be back with you guys nice to have the live show again i hope you enjoyed that as well but as i said next week i've got it all here is for us starting on the typhoon so obviously i'm going to be getting the engine installed into that one i've got the electric motor which is going to go inside the typhoon i've got the photo etch color cockpit sets harness sets things like that because i'm going to have it in a diorama doing a ground test and then obviously we've got the rebel 132nd typhoon so talk about both sides of the coin uh, and that's going to be an in-flight so i'm going to be starting those on monday so join us on monday and you can see how we're getting on with those and also the full on test of using the water mixable oil paints so have a great weekend everybody happy modeling and take care.